YouTube, Captain Dave Sport Fishing YouTube channel, Jacksonville, Florida. Welcome. I haven't done a video uh, from the wolf den here in quite a while. And the only thing I have done is playing around with those YouTube shorts. Eh, it's okay, but I mean, they're so short. And I guess that's, you know, the mentality today. Because, you know, of course, it's all competition with TikTok and the Chinamen that are invading us. So, what is going on? There's a lot going on. And this video is all about... Uh, kind of focused at a subscriber, a longtime subscriber. I don't know if he watches that much anymore or whatever. You know, he's super busy. Um, but I just got a whole bunch of more big gold spoons in for chucking at the Jetty Rocks. Mayport Jetty Rocks for the redfish that get up in the rocks. I may actually get somebody sometime this year who actually can do it because you've got to have a bit of the know-how to be able to take a spoon. This doesn't sink very fast and throw it into a 10 ton granite boulder pile. But what I was going to show you here is the big key. The key is here's your normal three quarter. And there is your one and an eighth. This is the long, the largest Johnson spoon that they make. And I always say they're a little difficult to find until I went to Tackle Warehouse and they had plenty so I bought five so I got a bunch in the boat I'll have a bunch as spares so you know I said I thought these were like eight bucks or something they're not they're not that expensive I mean, they're just, what makes me really like these is they're, of course, metal. I love metal lures. And they're so simple. But out of the package, because of that gold plating on them, you better get in here and sharpen them. Because these are super dull. And you have to sharpen them. Now, of course, like this one. I'll put a split ring and a swivel. This one's got a ball bearing swivel on it. I'll put that on all of these. And um, they have the perfect sink rate. That's what it's all about. They're doing the flutter. And I believe they're fluttering like this. So the hook, when it bangs into the rocks, the, the hook is possibly up. God, I'd love to see a, I'd love to be able to put a camera and cast up there and see what this does. But we can't use cameras around here because our water is like total filth, dirt, too many particulates, sand, and who the hell knows what else, tannin. So we can't, you can't use a camera underwater around here. All right, so let's get to what I wanted to focus this on. And then I got sort of a, of what's going on also at the end of the video. But I'm going to show you something, and this is focused towards a subscriber, Eddie Watford. He just is sitting right now waiting on his new Maycraft because he does striper fishing up in western South Carolina. I can never, ever, ever remember the name of the lake. I can't remember it. <laughs> so, um, 
let me get to what I want to show you. All righty. Check this out. I found this and immediately thought of Eddie. Eddie just ordered, I guess a couple months now ago, a brand new Maycraft center console. And I had one. This brochure is back from 1996. This brochure right here. And I had one. And I'm going to show you exactly what it looked like when it was brand new. That's kind of a blurry picture of me. I hope you can see it. Let me go back a little bit. tilt up a little bit so that's it that's how I bought it I got it down in South Florida I went to the Miami boat show and we were leaving and it's like 9 30 at night and you just walked five miles because you know you're just all over the place plus we stayed this is back when the Miami boat show was really good because it was back it was on Miami Beach and we'd stay in the old Art Deco hotels. We stayed in our favorite hotel. Back then, the hotel for two, one room was like 69 bucks a night. And we were leaving and I walked by a tent and I saw this. That's a 22 and a half, they call it a 23, Maycraft center console with a T-top electronics box, a rail. Uh, I think, yeah, it came with kind of a, I think it kind of came with a, what trailer did it come with? Kind of came with a crappy trailer. I can't remember a performance trailer. They're not very good. And it had a 1996 Ocean Pro 200 two stroke Evan Rood Ocean Pro and I got that discounted because that was a counter rotating that was a, a left rotating engine it was a single so who cares it doesn't matter which way it turns it's a single it didn't matter so I got like 1500 bucks off so I sort of did the math and bought an extended warranty for that engine for like 1200 through a company somewhere up in Georgia or something. And it was the name of it was the four reel and two because the, my prior boat was an 18 foot arrow glass. That's what I actually started in the charter business in is the arrow glass. Um, but I didn't do very long in that. I don't know, maybe I did 10 charters in it or something. And I got, I got rid of that and traded it in for this. This was brand new 1996 model, I believe 1997 model leaning post live well combo. And I changed it completely around. I got rid of this bow rail. I had the T-top and it broke a million times because it was kind of a cheap T-top. Had all kinds of bracing built into it. It was back then I was doing pretty much offshore charters, a lot of jetty, but a lot and a lot of King mackerel trolling. And of course I blew that engine up two, three times. Lack of lubrication with those two strokes. And the warranty paid for it almost every single time. I remember one time the bill was $7,500. I don't even know if the engine was worth that. And they paid for it. So that was back in the good old days. It had rod holders across. The console had a door with a shelf in it and you couldn't get up in there. Oh, it was a royal pain to work on any of the gauges. Today, you buy a boat with Lenco trim tabs. 
electromechanical trim tabs. Well, guess what? That company's been bought and sold. The funny thing about it was, is I put 12, get this, 12 by 18 trim tabs on this thing. It only needed like 9 by 11s or something, maybe, you know, small ones. That's what you'd normally get. I would bump the trim tab, and I'm telling you, the boat would just, woo, it would just, because it was the trim tabs. I mean, look at this frame. And picture it way out over 18 inches. Okay, 12 by 18s. Took up the whole transom on each side of the engine. And you know, back then, it, the company was up in New York, and everyone, this is a history lesson for you all that don't know and ain't been around that long, that everyone who I told that these were electric motor trim tabs. Said, that shit ain't going to work. They're going to break. I had a friend of mine, James Barry. He kind of helped me put them on, but, you know, he kind of just stopped by my house. And he's like, man, these things ain't going to work. Bennett's, you got to go hydraulic, man. Bennett, Bennett trim tabs. And I'm like, man, you're full of crap. I don't have a place to put the hydraulic motor. I wasn't... I installed these basically in one afternoon with a little help and with not a lot of help. Okay. As usual, I do a lot of everything by myself. I believe my dad came over and then James came over or whatever. But um, look at that today. Lenco trim tabs are damn near standard on every new boat. And I had them back then in 96, 97. I can tell you something that I just learned by looking at this brochure. I just learned this. Is that back when I bought this, this was sitting on the, on the uh, dealer lot. A dealer next door to Dusky Factory. It was right down the street from the Dusky factory. We went to the Miami Boat Show. And then I think I called them or did, blah, 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 did something. I don't know. We stopped by there and looked. And I was like, hey, dude, I'm not sure. I'm going over to look at the Duskies. And back then, I was so naive. This had a cut transom. And really, in all reality, back then, brackets... Like an Armstrong bracket, a stainless marine bracket, uh, boats with Euro transoms, you know, the old dip, like a contender with the engine sticking out. Boats even like my aluminum boat that I have now did not really exist that much. They weren't as popular. So I said to him, let me go over and look at Dusky. I sat down with the man himself, Ralph Brown the owner of Dusky Marine. He gave us a tour through the factory and sat down in his office and said, let's write up a quote or whatever. And then I said to him, being so naive, Dusky always has a bracket on the back. They call it the Dusky Drive. It's fiberglass versus a stainless one or an aluminum one, or whatever. It was fiberglass. I sat there and told Ralph Brown, but I don't want a bracket. I want a, like a cut transom with a splash well. And he looked at me and he goes, like, son, all we do is dusky drive. We, done, we invented dusky drive brackets. And I said to him, I can remember specifically saying, but I see a 23 Dusky up in Jacksonville that don't have a, that doesn't have a bracket. And it's got like just a board coming up on an angle to wash the water out the back. And it's a splash well. And he said, well, somebody else obviously did it because that boat left the factory with a Dusky drive bracket. So being so naive, I mean, if I knew then what I knew now, it's kind of like what you always say about women. 
<laughs> um, if I knew then what I knew now, everything would have be everything would be different today, if you can imagine that. Because I went and got this boat because I wanted a cut transom. I was so afraid of getting lines or something tangled in the in the engine and I couldn't get out there to get it out which on this tilted it up the engine came up in the boat so getting something out of the prop prop was a piece of cake I had a customer one time during the greater Jacksonville Kingfish tournament put a god dang downrigger cable this is back when we were using cable on our downriggers. He put a downrigger cable in my engine. Stopped the boat cold. And I had to tilt the engine up and just start cutting and pulling pieces that wrapped in there. So that's back in the old days. And like I said, everything would be different now. Because there's, my, there's the 20, 23 footer. The 27, I saw a 27 where I bought mine at that dealership. This 27 is so enormous. I mean, look at the size of the guy sitting in it. And it has just a single engine bracket, nine and a half foot beam. That is the boat to have. It's so big, so wide, has so much space. And it's funny because even on the 23, if you look, but everything would be different today. Because see what they say? Motor bracket. I did not even really realize. That's I never even paid attention down here. Oil tank storage. Because there was no four strokes. Everything would be different now. Because, you know, I had this boat for 10 years. I got rid of it in 06. And that's when I ordered my aluminum boat. The big 26-foot Jetty Wolf. But everything would be different now. Because the reason I got rid of this boat was for one simple reason. Not because it wasn't big enough. I mean, I had four people on this boat, plus me. This boat had a lot, a lot, a lot of memories. And I'm telling you, built like a brick shit house. Never had a problem with it. <coughs> Everything would be different today if I had that motor bracket. Because behind the leaning post right here was a big old 32-gallon live well. I had that live well just screaming. I tweaked the living crap out of that thing. It had a Venturi pump for just recirculating. It would suck the air from the outside. It had a pump that went in and then the water just ran out for like them stinky ass pogies. And of course, even, see, I learned all this with my aluminum boat because as I started to learn, no one, no one wants to fish up here. No one. Because why? No matter what we're doing, all the current is going to the stern. So people start up here and then they, they eventually, it's like they're snails. They creep on down. And when you got four guys that weigh 250 to 350 pounds standing here with 32 gallons worth of water in there, and then you can see I haven't changed much. I still got this tire here. So everybody migrates back here and all that weight would put the scuppers underwater and the back of the boat would fill up. But if you got, if you got one with a bracket, you'd have a full transom like this 27. Now I would not own this boat without a full transom and a bracket. I don't want just a single little pod. I'd want a big pod back here. All right, so that's something you learn over time. Today, we take, grant, we take all this for granted. But listen, I mean, there is a lot to learn 
before you buy a boat. But this is for Eddie. There's going to be Eddie's boat. I don't know what he's doing. I don't think he got a bracket. I don't know. Um, I don't think he got the leaning post live well combo. I don't know what he did, but that's a 22 six foot boat, eight foot beam. An eight foot beam is at the console. It's not in the stern. And that's one thing I didn't, I didn't have to trade. The sides on this boat from the stern corner right here all the way to the bow are the exact same dimensions as my aluminum Jetty Wolf, my Black Lab Marine. So, all right, let's switch to the next thing that I was going to tell you about. All right, there's some big possible changes. There's something going on here relatively soon, I think. You know, I've had all kinds of prostate issues. I had this thing where they auger the prostate. Well, I went for my third biopsy. When was that? On Wednesday. Third biopsy. Uh, so I'm a veteran biopsy guy. And how they do that is they go up your butt with a thing, like an ultrasound thing. And then there's needles on it and it shoots through and up into your prostate and takes out a chunk of skin. Then they send that to pathology. The next thing is they're going to come back and tell me if I have prostate cancer or not. Like having the TERP procedure, which they go up Mr. Happy, auger all the way up in here, and then pull that out, okay? And they said then they didn't see no cancers even on those little pieces of meat they're bringing out. And that was a week of walking around with a catheter and a bag strapped to my leg. So now, after all this, I had to go to, I had oh, numerous MRIs. Then I had to have an MRI that was a specific kind of MRI to go to this urologist. And I'm going to the same place on the outside of where my VA doctor did 30 years. He worked for the same place that I went to for 30 years. And now he works for the VA. This guy's a total workaholic. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, there's all kinds. My dad had prostate cancer and he got radiated. But then who knows? There's, there's all these side effects. And surgery, the side effect that bothers me the most, is possible incontinence. Well, I had that for four years prior to the TERP procedure, the augering out. All this may not mean anything to you until you get it or until you have prostate issues. And then you're going to know all about it real quick. So it turns out that now I'm sitting and maybe this week they're going to tell me the doom and gloom. So it's literally kind of one step at a time here of figuring out what to do. You know, because by all this, by the time all this happens, it's going to be spring break, summer. And I mean, I need to make some coin here because you ain't, I ain't doing it on YouTube. That's for damn sure. And I don't, you know, there ain't, there ain't no sugar mama here in this house paying the bills. So there's guaranteed coming up with the appointments and the this and the that. And if I do the surgery stuff or whatever, oh man, it's going to be a, what, a couple weeks of downtime or if you add it all up, that's the bo that's what bothers me. And afterwards, if you end up where you can't hold it, as I went through that on the boat before I had this turp procedure, which is fantastic for enlarged prostates, I'd be on the boat and I'd have to go. And if I didn't go right then and there, it ran down my leg. So it's all these things that nobody ever talks about, you know, peeing and going up your butt and all this stuff to get stuff done down there. But it's all nothing that anybody ever wants to have to go through and worry about. So, but I'll, I'll maybe do an update or whatever. I've been watching a lot of videos of guys that are 
they literally doing a video mapping it out of every single thing they do. And they got 40, 50, 60, 100,000 views. I mean, that's, I guess, what I should be doing. Because then I can make some money on YouTube. But it won't be fishing. And it won't be for my subscribers. If I do a video about every procedure. I mean, I didn't do one about the third biopsy and I didn't do one about the multiple MRIs. So I've already started, so I'd be having to play catch up. But that's it. I try to stay on a little bit of a high point because what I want, I just can't afford. I say the 25, the 25 Maycraft. And now they're building them where you can get them with CUSA board. They do a complete composite boat. But then again, they usually don't have any issues with their wood. They still build them out of wood. These, this company's still doing pretty old school. They're not doing any vacuum bag and fusing and all that because this is basically a budget boat. But it's a tough, tough, tough budget boat. It, I was in some seas in mine that I would pray to be in those seas again in my aluminum boat instead of in that boat. But I made it through it. So, all right. I know this is a long video because I wanted to go over a bunch of stuff from spoons to boats to prostate issues. So, thanks for watching is all I can say is... Um, if you ever want to help out on this channel, the link is always in the video description of my Tools of the Trade page on Amazon. I have the spoons on there, but of course, you know, basically I think you can get them at a better price from uh, Tackle Warehouse. I'm not affiliated with Tackle Warehouse at all. I just go there looking for the good deals and I happen to find these giant redfish catchers. So, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you when I know something else. It's always something. <laughs>